We would like to welcome you this morning. We'd like to say a special welcome to Trenton, a friend of Stephen France, and to those who are joining us online. We are so glad to be with you this morning. It's a pleasure to us young people to have the chance to serve our church this morning by running the service. God is so good. I'd like to ask Noah Taylor to come up and make a few announcements. So today, there's basketball today at the GBHS gym for adults and teens from 6, to, 7, uh, from 6 to 7.30. Guys and girls are welcome, and remember to wear a dark and a white shirt. There will be a congregational meeting here at the church on Thursday, December 1st from 7 to 9. You are encouraged to come. Uh, there is a Christmas choir practice next Sunday here after church at 1.30. However, could all the choir members stay today after the service? Isabel has a two-minute question for you. This Friday, there is a YFC youth night across the street at the camp from 7 to 9.30 for grades 7 and up. We have some fun Christmas youth nights for the month of December, including a gingerbread competition, caroling, a Jesus birthday bash overnight. So check your emails for all details or contact Rebecca or Scotia with any questions. Next Sunday, November 20th, the United Church Congregation will be meeting for, a, for coffee in the hall until 1045. So anyone arriving before then should please steer clear of the hall until 1045. And we're now in the season of snow. So if the church does get, uh, so if church does get canceled, it will be broadcasted through email. So if you are not on the email list, please go talk to Shelly, who's right over there, so you can get the email so you know if there's church. I think that's all for announcements. So now I would like to ask Rebecca to come up with the children from Kids Church. Can I ask all of the kids who practice their song to come on up? And you guys are going to join us on this stage. And we actually have some helpers that are going to help us. Silas and Trenton and Peyton. So you guys can come on up and sit in the front. Okay, nice line right behind there, guys. Right. Are we missing some? There's Faith Ann. Come on up. So we have three older boys who are helping them remember their options today. So last week in Kids Church, we were talking about freedom in Christ. With Remembrance Day having just passed, we are remembering the sacrifice the soldiers made for us to have a great country that we live in. And we shifted our focus to the ultimate sacrifice that was made for us by Jesus Christ dying on the cross. So we decided, why would Jesus do that for us? And we think, and we all agree, it's because he loves us. Oh, oh, hi. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm used to having a loud voice, so I thought I would love them. Um, did you hear any of that? Okay. Sorry. So we were talking about freedom in Christ and the sacrifice the soldiers made for us. And of course, we turned our focus to the ultimate sacrifice that Jesus made for us dying on the cross. And we came to the conclusion that he did this because he loves us very much. So we thought we'd sing about that today. All right, where's my guitarist? Yeah.
great job. All right. So, um, my little helper. Yes, I see this. All right. So, um, we are actually going to ask Patty and Jen and Aksana to come on up. And we're going to get them to come back around. Faith Ann, do you want to come back up? And we're going to get all the kids that go to kids' church to come on up. Come on up. Okay. And they thought there were Oh, yeah. I know, they're coming. So we're going to ask if Pastor Bruce and Bernard would come up and pray for these guys before they head out to Kids Church. And these are our leaders today, and I wanted to say, oh, sorry, I wanted to say, I'm so used to walking around, I wanted to say um, thank you to our helpers today, because we wouldn't be able to have Kids Church with all the people who are willing to give up their time, and it's really important for them to feel um, appreciated. So. Thank you, Jen and Kathy and Aksana, for uh, being our helpers today. We have a whole team of helpers that are on a rotation, and so we really appreciate you guys. Okay. So thank you. We're going to pray you. for you. Great job, ladies. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you that the church is not everybody over 25. The church is your people. Young people, teenagers, young adults, adults. This is your church. And so we pray your blessing, your presence. With this group of people who serve our young people, who teach them about you, who care for the development of young lives. And so we thank you so much for the volunteers who rotate through for the scripture that they implant, the stories they tell, pointing our young people more and more to you. As we are here this morning, Lord, I pray you would bless us as we hear of the way that your Holy Spirit is working in these lives to bring the generation that is younger than us into its fullness. Thank you, Lord, for the volunteers. Thank you for Rebecca's leadership. Thank you for these young people. We ask your blessing in the name of Christ. All right, so we'll dismiss you guys to Kids Church. Have fun. And I'm going to ask Altez to come on up. She's going to lead us in a time of prayer. Hello, everyone. All right, so I have seven prayer requests, so I'm just going to read them all, and then we'll... So first we have Zoe. She says that they're moving tomorrow, so prayers would be appreciated because COVID is in their grandparents' nursing home. So pray for that. There's Vivica too that praises God that her mother is willing to drive her to church sometimes, so we'll be able to see them again for a bit. We have a prayer for Neil. He's grateful for the healing God has provided for him, but he needs some for knee, his knee surgery that is coming up, I guess. And then there's Birgit saying that Zarina is feeling very sick today, so if we could pray against all the side effects, so healing. We pray for Renee's brother-in-law, Mark, who went back to ICU due to the low blood pressure that he's having. We have Amy, too, for full belly. She's struggling. She's saying it's too much weight for her to bear and that she can't let the people down. They rely on her program. And we have also Rainy, who is at the hospital with a possible broken foot. So hopefully it's just a sprain, but we need to pray for her healing as well. So I'm just going to pray now for all the things. Oh, yes.
Dear Lord Jesus, we come to you today thanking you for everything you do for us. We thank you that you are with us and that you love us and that you will never leave us or forsake us. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you would come and that you would bless us with your provision and your healing so that we may be okay, we may be all right with you. We ask for your wisdom, that you would give wisdom to those who need it that they may know what they need to do, that you would guide them. We ask for mercy and grace as well, Lord Jesus. Show us the way so we can do your will. Help us through these tribulations. And help us to do your will, Lord Jesus. We thank you for everything you do for us. And we thank you for being with us, especially at all times. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything you do. We love you and we are so grateful that we have such a great church community who can pray for each other. In your sweet and holy name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. So now I'm going to ask Martin to come and share her testimony slash prayer. So as you know, I'm not the typical type of person to ask for a prayer. So I realized one thing in my life I really do need it for. So the last two months were a roller coaster with my relationship with God. So living in a house with no other people like that are Christian can be really hard. I feel weird praying for eating, praying out loud by my night, reading Bible, the Bible somewhere else than my bedroom. This list can go for a while. I can list about ten more things. Um, But as some of you know, I am a youth leader, and it's really hard to lead the team to following Jesus when I have trouble following Jesus myself as of some time. But this past Friday, when we had youth, the topic was patient. When the video started to play, it was a game. So basically, um, you would have to sit down and then a minute, and you had to stand up when you think the minute was up. But the guy on the video, kept talking and talking and like we exchanged things like a four different kind of way. And then the guy was getting on my last nerve. <laughs> like it was very bad. But after that when Rebecca started talking about uh, a couple of things, uh, she started talking about how you need to read your Bible and pray and spend time with him to like connect with God and being able to talk. Um, so I was like, I was shaking, and I was just like, how did God know I needed to hear that? So I was shaking, I almost started to cry. So when we went into a small group, I was like not talking at all. So yeah. So what did you pray? What did you, how can we pray for you as a church? So just for uh, my relationship with God, being able to like spend time with him and just connect him with him. Lord Jesus, we lift up Martin to you. We thank you for who she is and her impact on our community. We ask, Lord, that you would give her wisdom and guide her to just come closer to you just a little bit every day. It could be five minutes, ten minutes. We ask that you would give her grace, too, that she would draw close to you and she would love you 
she wants to go for more and more. Lord Jesus, we love Madison and we know that you love her even more. So that's why we pray for her, that you would be with her and get closer to her and she would draw closer to you. In your sweet and holy name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. So now, it's worship.
and I'm sharing a poem by Joanna Fuchs. You are always there for me. When the world comes crashing in and chaos rules my mind, I turn my heart to you, Lord, and pure, sweet peace I find. You leave me out of trouble, you come for beating pain. You nourish, heal, and cleanse me like cool, refreshing rain. In times of joy and bliss, when things are going right, you leave me even higher and fill me with delight. You listen to my prayers, you hear my every plea. I'm safe because I know you are always there for me. I really like this poem because it reminds me, it reminds me no matter what, we are happy, we are in times of joy or in pain, he's always there for us. He loves us and we love him. And sorry. He he reminds us that he's always there and we pray to him, we ask him for help. He answers our prayer and he tells us to be calm and trust in him. God is good all the time and all the time God is good. Thank you. <laughs> asked to share my favorite Bible verse with you guys, and um, this is an art piece that I made that is inspired by uh, the verse John 3, 16 and 17. So I'm just going to read it to you now, so I can say it slower, I guess. <laughs> uh, For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For he did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save it through him. Now I know this is like the most Sunday school answer, like you learned this when you were six, um, Bible verse, but it is a very powerful verse and has meant a lot to me through the years. I have struggled with feeling, well, with the fear that like maybe I'm not saved or that God couldn't love me, but that's not true. <laughs> uh, so thank God for my parents, who were the voice of reason, and would say, Callie, what is your favorite Bible verse? And John 3, 16. <laughs> and <laughs> it reminded me that he has not come to condemn me, he's come to save me. 
I've been bought with the price, the very expensive price of one God. And the question is, like, do you believe that? I can say, yes, I do. <laughs> well, shake <laughs> So, I don't think she gives enough, enough credit, but this is her art piece, isn't that beautiful? Like, what a great representation, and I just asked her at the last minute to come up with some beautiful piece, and when we're at Bible study, she's always doing these amazing little drawings, and I kind of just get lost in her drawings. She's so artistic, so thank you, Tully, for sharing that with us. Um, all right, I'm going to ask uh, you guys to come up with some beautiful Thank you. 
lives when they decide to get baptized. And we don't very often get to hear from their heart after that. So I've decided to do today an interview with a team. And so if some of you guys were around in the summer, sorry guys, um, then you would have uh, been a witness to the baptism of Oliver Ken uh, Cannell. And so I've asked him to come on up, Holly, and um, I'm going to ask him a few questions, and he's going to share his answers with you guys. We're just standing. So the first question I asked um, Oliver to answer was, since you have decided to follow Jesus and be baptized, um, what has been your biggest challenge so far? Well, I, I usually ponder upon the question, am I really saved? Am I worthy of being saved? After all the sins I have committed. Now, there's various verses in the scripture that speak about this issue, but somehow I always seem to question myself about it, even though there's an evident proof. I start asking myself, why is that? Why am I always stumbling onto this? Is it because of something I haven't dropped off my chest? Is there something that I have not asked forgiveness for that I should have? Is it because of is it because ever since I was a kid, I was told that being a true Christian means being perfect? Is it because of ever, of every so-called Christian on social media makes it seem like if you're not a shining knight in a golden armor, making the, sorry, made to help everyone and not have the problems of your own, then you're not it. Is my issue really that questioning if God accepts me or if society accepts me as a Christian? Because I've been told many times that I'm not behaving like a Christian. What does that really mean? These so remarks made by non-Christian people that have never read the Bible, the Word of God, non-believers. These people dismiss that I'm a human and come to the conclusion that I am a, if I am a Christian, I'm better than them and obligated to be perfect. I feel like I feel like I get the same entity from people in the Christian inner circle as well. So I think the true problem is not whether God has deemed me worthy of his love and acceptance, but the way that society portrays believers of Christ. Truly, I, I believe that the biggest challenge since my baptism is the impact of society on my beliefs. Well, I was reading, uh, writing this, uh, sorry. I realized that I was walking down the wrong route, trying to fix the wrong problem, having a bad approach, but I think that was easy inside. This youth service helped me realize that, and for that, I thank everyone who helped organize and make this possible. Thank you, Ollie, what a great answer. I love it when people get to share uh, their heart, because we know that it's not perfect, right? This journey is not without its trials and challenges. So thank you for sharing that. Um, the next question I asked him, the answer was, since then, what has been the best part? Since my journey with Christ, I feel like the church has become my children family with whom I can come on Sundays and feel at peace, welcome, and accepted. I know some weeks 
I feel off and distant from God and those and those in that inner circle. But I'm always looking forward to that Sunday sermon, that closing line. Just remember, you represent Christ in everything you do. I feel like I need to apply that to my everyday life because I got a heavenly father to represent and a beautiful family to keep me accountable. Awesome. That's a blessing. And the last part was, the last question I asked is, how can we, as a church, help you in this journey? I feel like, I feel like the church has been plenty helping me through my journey. And to elaborate on this, I feel like when I come to church, the lesson of the day, I always apply it to something I'm going, that's going on in my life, or to help others around me. As well, as well, it helps me to go through my week, to, to repeat the cycle, Another time with a positive look at things. In prayer, rest, there's nothing I love more than seeing the community get together to help one another. This self selflessness of people. Truly, all I ask is support during times of need. Thank you for your attention. birthday party and um, uh, I looked over and Miss Royale was creating this masterpiece in a matter of minutes and I was like you guys need to see this so I asked her to paint a, a make a painting create something amazing which I know she has secretly I needed to see it so I'm like and uh, to represent um, a verse that means something to you so here you go Oh, yes. Do you want to go up there? Hi. So, two weeks ago, Rebecca asked me to paint a little something with the Bible. A little something. That I can apply to. Um, so, I got to work. Eventually, I got it done in like a week. Um, so, the Lord prompted me to prompted me to choose Psalm 23 because it reminds me that in life, in times of plenty or want, God is good and worthy of our trust. Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. So, um, shepherd? You guys would come after. There's a tiny shepherd there. The sheep. I added that last. Um, he makes me lie down in green pastures. Green pastures. And in still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. In purple mountain there. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod and staff comfort me. You prepare a table for me before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will be in the house, and I dwell, I will dwell in the house of the Lord. I just love how um, personal Psalm 23 is. Notice how there's no us or we or they rather David's one-on-one -on -one personal testimony with God. Um, my prayer and hope for all of us this morning is that God places his truth in our hearts, that we may find our confidence in him, to rise above the storm clouds in our everyday lives as David did when writing the psalm. There are places in his word, there are places in his word that are so powerful and so deep that just to say them out loud is to experience them. I definitely think Psalm 23 is one of those places, and I want to think, and I want you to think about how God's simple beauty surrounds us every day. Thank you.
You wear this headset every Sunday? <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Perfect. So last time I was up here to speak, it was at the outdoor service. And I was told that last time you disappointed because I brought up the context of a corny Christian joke, but never delivered. So if any of you are looking for an art, I know a guy. <laughs> All right, so with that out of the way, I would like to start by asking you to find an obstacle in your life. Just think about an obstacle, and I'll bring, bring it back later. It might be a doubt, a fear, a reoccurring sin. No matter how big or how small this obstacle is, I want you to find it. Because today I bring you a message about a story of a young man who faced a very large obstacle. Some would even say that this obstacle was a giant. The story I'm making reference to here is David and Goliath. So I debated talking about the story just because of how much we hear about it as Christians. Yeah, you know, we get it. Some kid throws a rock at this mean tall guy and wins. But if this goes without surprise, but the message in the story lies within the details rather than the big pictures. For you who don't know David, uh, David was the youngest of eight sons. His father was a farmer, and he spent most of his boyhood tending to his family's flock. Now, if you ask me, David doesn't sound like much of a fighter. I mean, if I asked you to build me an army, would you go out and see all the shepherds? Probably not. Well, many of you know that David fought Goliath, but how many of you know that he was never asked he volunteered. They were simply uh, visiting camps and he was uh, bringing, bringing food. It was a favor he did for his father because his brothers were soldiers. And uh, when he got there, he heard word about this giant uh, Philistine of a man named Goliath. And after hearing these details, uh, Samuel uh, 1, 17, 32 said that David told Saul, don't worry, I'll go find it. Now, just to give you a bit of context on what that statement entailed, ancient texts say that Goliath was six cubits and a span tall, which translates to about 11 feet and 3 inches. Right. And they even say that his sword weighed three times the weight of a normal blade. Let's give you a scale. Now, David only being a boy, uh, was offered armor, but refused it as he wasn't used to that. Now, David looked over sheep while Goliath probably could have swallowed one whole. <laughs> so what does David do? He goes by a nearby a river and picks up five smooth stones from the creek. Uh, just a creek nearby, and then uh, he heads for battle. So I want you to picture David. This little boy, this little shepherd boy with five stones in a bag facing this giant. Obviously, he was mocked. Verse 43 says that God mocks David and asks him, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? I mean, yeah, he had a 15 pound sword and David had five rocks. Um, but David replies to him, I want you to listen to this next part carefully. You come with me with swords, spears, and javelins, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the army of Israel, whom you have defied. Today the Lord will conquer you and cut off your head. That's exactly what David does. He strikes Goliath and kills him with his very sword. Now let me ask you, how many times have you been faced with a giant of your own? Without armor, with no army, no sword, no shield, in the same place with David, faced with the impossible, with nothing but a couple of rocks. I want you to focus on that last part and bear with me, but the rocks. And believe me, I believe that those rocks hold uh, much more symbolism than we might think. I mean, think about it, the, socks were, the rocks were given to David when swords and armor were no longer an option. Now, in the Bible, does it say that David changed his mind when he realized he had no armor? Or that he spent hours looking for the perfect stones, and when he couldn't find the right rock, he said, too bad, 
I'm going home. Too many times we're faced with the obstacles in our circumstances, our connections, or even our tools. You know why David faced Goliath with those stones? Because he didn't have faith in stones, he had faith in God. I'll tell you right now, I've found myself uh, fighting many Goliaths and giants of my own. And I've found the most useful tool there is. It's stronger than any blade. It'll protect you better than any shield. It'll guard your heart better than a breastplate that was forged with the strongest metals. Reason says is in Hebrew that it's sharper than any two-edged sword. This. This is my stone. And it doesn't matter how old you are, how intelligent you are, how much money you have, how good your social skills are. The word of God serves the weapon to the unarmed. So I want you to ask you, I want to ask you this week to pick up your stones and to not put your trust in your capabilities but those of God. Because David did fight Goliath and God didn't just send him on a battlefield. It says that David as a shepherd boy had uh, fought bears with clubs. So you do have a Goliath in your life. We all do. And if you're not ready to fight Goliath, start with the bear. God will guide you through that. And eventually, he will build you strong enough to use this weapon against your very own life. And reality is, some of you might have multiple lives. That's scary. You can't imagine being surrounded by a bunch of 11 foot giants. But I want you guys to remember this that though my enemy surrounds me, God surrounds my enemies. So go fight your Goliath. And it even says that David held up Goliath's head after cutting it off as a, as a sign of victory. Victory wasn't his, it was God's. But I want you to conquer that Goliath and hold his head up high. And you take pride that you overcame that giant. Thank you.
Thank you all for being here and supporting us as a youth. And you just want to stay wherever you go, whatever you do, you represent Jesus, so do that well. <laughs>